Okay, 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 okay. Welcome. We are, y'all, it is a good day because it is a good year. I don't know about you, but I am very excited to start off 2022. At the end of 2021, I kind of felt like I just needed a deep cleansing breath. Like I needed a moment to be like, release the past, release what didn't work, release whatever pressure I had to like make sure that everything was working out the way that I had planned it. Mm, no, not going to do that. My question for you, yes or no, is have you set your goals for 2022? Yes or no? And there's no judgment if you haven't. Like, it took me, you know, normally, I know it's very annoying. Normally, I'm the kind of person who will, like, get up at the end of uh, every year. I just love writing goals. I love breaking them down. I love banging it out. And I feel super productive when I do. It, like, comes to me. Me and the goals are one. Uh, this year, on the back of 2021, I was just, like, me and goals were, like, frenemies. Like, we ain't even about each other. And it was a tough go. But because I know the importance of setting goals, I decided I'm not going to put pressure on myself. But I just wrote out my goals over the span of three or four days, just a little bit at a time. And even if I actually told my business partner and my husband, even if the goals just weren't coming to me the way that they had in the past. The one thing that I keep clear and true in the front of my mind is that your dreams and my dreams should be so big, they scare you. And after 2020 and 2021, I told my husband, I'm like, I'm just tired of being scared. You know, like we've come up a few years of fear. And I was like, how about we just have goals that make us feel safe? that make me feel comfortable. And then I realized that the minute that you set goals that you know, just by doing what you do, you're going to hit, you don't find yourself trying as hard, pushing yourself, getting hungry, getting feisty, getting ready to take a bite out of the future you know is yours. And the thing that I've realized over the years is that you can't achieve something you are aiming for. If you're kind of like, listen, couple years I've been tired let me just do what I've been doing great but if at a month or three months or six months or ten months from now you're like this year isn't shaping up the way that I wanted well did you know what you wanted your year to shape up as there is no right or wrong there's no like oh that's too big or that's too small pick something anything but the thing I want you to also keep in the back of your mind is that regardless of what kind of year you've had you are more capable than you give yourself credit for. Now, I'm saying that to you as much as I am saying it to myself. I came across a journal from 2019. And in that journal, it was the summer of 2019, and I was a part of a mastermind group, and I was journaling on my flight home. I was in Chicago coming back to Newport Beach, and I was journaling what I was feeling. And let me just be honest with you. The feelings, my feelings in 2019 are the same as they are in 2022. The feelings. My business does not look anything like it did in 2019. Thank you, God. The business has more than 5X'd what I was doing in 2019. But I found it ironic that the feelings, and I'm just going to be real with you, doubt, fear, uncertainty, wondering if you're choosing the right path, wondering if you're moving too fast, wondering if you're moving too slow, all of those are feelings. I am sitting in front of you three years later saying, my God, I was journaling the same feelings. But because I didn't give up, because there was a plan, and because I wanted to show up with a very specific way, I was able to grow despite how I felt. Let us not get our feelings in the way of the actions that we take. Can I get an amen? Let us not get our feelings in the way of the actions we must take. Because this is it. 
I don't know if you need this. You don't need it from me, but just in case you did and nobody is supporting in your in your life and you kind of just need a big swift kick in the pants, this is your permission slip. Look at me. I'm going to take out a piece of paper. And I'm going to write that to you. That is your permission slip. Why not dream big? Why not put down one big goal that you want for this year? If you are watching this video, there is a reason. I'm sorry, I don't believe that things just happen. I believe it's divine providence. I believe it's destiny. I believe it is a manifestation of the thing that you desired for somebody to come in and say, what is it that you want? Okay, honey, let's start working for it. Because once you have that big idea, then and only then can you follow up those big dreams with big action. Big dreams require big action. If you want to do what you are doing, keep the status quo, you can't keep on doing what you're doing and keep it. You have to work a little bit harder to keep it. That's just how it works. If you want big changes in your life, you're going to have to make radical actions to make it happen. And if this sounds intimidating to you, no way, no way, Jose, mm -mm, honey. What we're going to do is we're going to break down your big dreams into smaller accomplishable goals. So what I like to do, the framework that I use is when I look at an entire year, I look at the year in each quarter. So I look at the year in three months at a time, three months at a time. And so I'm looking at four quarters. And then every quarter, I look at a pretty big initiative that I want to accomplish in that quarter. Now, there are small things, small goals leading up to that big goal. And the more I become accustomed with the small goals, I'm less intimidated. Like, let's say that you have this big goal in quarter one to launch your website. Just the idea of launching a website, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to get the photos and I have to write the copy and do I need a headshot and do I need testimonials and do I need outward facing links and do I need vanity URLs and do I need an opt-in and what's the bonus and what are the terms? You can totally stop yourself from taking action. But if you were every single week to have one initiative, like this week I am going to write the copy for my about section and next week I'm going to write the copy for how to buy and then the next week I'll design an opt-in and then the next week I'll plan to get my headshots like when you have these small tiny goals along the way it helps you achieve your quarterly big massive goal so on the inside of social curator each department has a has a big goal, like a, probably like a big initiative. So for instance, um, in quarter one at Social Curator, our, we have a big goal. We have a big goal of doing a launch. Now, every department, our technology department, we have this whole new feature, cannot wait to debut. Oh my God, it gives me the shivers. It's that amazing. And then our marketing department is all getting the messaging around what this new feature and the opportunities are. Our customer success team is all focused on this one big goal to make sure that all new users are supported in the way that they want. And then our content and community has this big goal of saying, when we usher in a big wave of students, how will they be supported? What do they need? How do they make sure that they're staying connected in the community? Like always, one big massive initiative and small goals leading up to that. So the goals give you clarity. The goals give you clarity. I have to tell you that when you set a big initiative and then you're like, okay, these are the 12, these are the 20, these are the 30 small goals leading up to it. There has never been a, there has never been a time where we lay out like these benchmarks and we're like, oh, they stayed the same. Like we casted our vision and all 30 small goals never changed. No. What happens is that when you start doing the smaller goals, you start realizing, oh, wait a minute. I underestimated the time. I overestimated the time. I overestimated the cost. I underestimated the cost. This is gonna require a little bit more help from a third party. Oh, what about this idea? I didn't actually see it this way. What happens is that the more that you accomplish, the more clarity you get towards your bigger goal. So all of that to say, because people are like, girl, get to your dang point. Number one, we're gonna get to Q&A. Like, I wanna get down and dirty. We're getting into Q&A right now. But I cannot get into Q&A. I cannot get into Q&A because people are gonna say, she's so rude. 
She's not listening to me. Whoa, 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 wait. We're going to get to Q&A. But before we get there, I need to establish that you must absolutely start messy, start scrappy, start scared. I cannot work. I cannot chat. I cannot encourage people who live in their heads. Oh, well, when I start, well, what if, and then he will say, and I can't afford, no, 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 no. Those are all thoughts. I don't deal with thought dwellers. I deal with action takers. I would rather you come to me and say, Jasmine, I did 30 things wrong. And you want to know what? I'd be like, good. I can work with you because you're doing the work. I can't work with the person who's like, I thought about the 30 things that could go wrong. Sorry, we ain't going to go nowhere. Because thought dwellers dwell in a space of I'm stuck and I'm doing the same thing. It's the action takers that are like, wow, I feel like I really suck. And I look at that and I'm like, no, you don't. You're just crossing off the things that didn't work. Now we're going to focus on the things of creating a list of things that do. So I want to show you my process of how I bring out these quarterly goals and then break, uh, quarterly initiatives and break them out into smaller goals. It is a free document, jasminestar.com forward slash productivity. It is a roadmap. I give you examples. There is a video tutorial. It's all for free, jasminestar.com forward slash productivity. Because what I want to do now is I want to dive into Q&A, but please download that resource, number one, because it's free. And number two, I want to dive deep. I love pushing people towards their dreams. I love making people feel a little bit uncomfortable so that they accomplish more than they actually dreamt of. And it's very common for people to come to me and say, Jasmine, I had this big goal and I didn't hit it. But what I realized in not hitting the goal is that even though I didn't hit that big goal, it was much farther than what I actually thought I was capable of to begin with. And to that I say yes and amen. Let's dive into some Q and A. I'm so happy you're here. I like just popping in. I like keeping this party started. I like serving and I hope that I serve well. Um, Lixon Lynn, what do you use to plan your year? A planner? At different stages of my business, I use different things. I started my career off as a photographer and I had a, a, a very, very, very large 12 month calendar and on this 12 month calendar and it was like big it's like pretty 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 big and then i would put post-it notes around things that i needed to get done and when and then i was able to move post-it notes as i needed uh years later i got into consulting i was taking on medium and large businesses talking about social media strategy and so for me i started moving more towards working with things like asana and google calendar Asana is a task management process, so I would have a client and then each of those clients would have tasks underneath them. I do not do consulting in that capacity anymore. And I became a course creator and I still used Asana. And now that I'm CEO and co-founder of Social Curator, we've really up-leveled the way that we're looking at our goals now. So um, on the tech side, we use something called Whimsical and notion so whimsical is a way that we can like visually draw out a calendar and we break out this calendar into four quarters and then we talk about all the tech initiatives that we'll need and then in notion we have a bunch of cards and calendars and this is where the team can go in and see like where are we going and then in notion you can move your cards accordingly we also still use asana so when it comes to creating goals i'm still like a a pen and paper kind of girl I literally bring out a notebook and a pen and I'm just writing. And then from there, we'll take it into, depending on which team, like marketing might still use a lot of like Asana and Notion, but the tech team will be using like Whimsical, Notion, Figma, things of that nature. Okay, Woo, that was a long one. Uh, Annie, uh, Ann had said, I have a big vision of my dream home down to the tiny details I want, but I never know what big goal to start with. So 2022, I'm going to start my business idea, but no idea how to make a plan with steps. So, Anne, if your big goal, from what I understand, is to start a business, then I would make an initiative. You're starting your business. So then in quarter one, your big initiative, which is what I recommend to all business owners, is have a website. What if your big initiative for quarter one is to launch your website by the end of March? What does Anne need to do 
to launch her website by the end of March. You need to write copy. Like, what are you going to say on your website? You need to have like a professional photo taken. You don't need to. I recommend it. Um, you can even set up like your iPhone in a self timer and feel really great about yourself and take a photo that way. But you're going to need some sort of headshot. You're, if you want a logo, you don't always need a logo. But if you need a logo, you're going to have to get somebody to design that for you. And you're going to have to have a clear offer. What do you sell? When you have a clear offer, what you sell, your copy, the words on your website, reflect the benefit and the transformation. And then people get to know you as a service or product provider. And then there's a clear way to buy, then great. But by launching your website, they must be able to buy something from that website, right? And so you want to make sure that that is your first initiative. Probably within that first initiative on your website, you're going to want people to follow you on social media. So week one have a start your Instagram account tailored for your business and week two start a Facebook page starting for business or or LinkedIn or TikTok wherever your dream customer is make sure that you're creating content there and then week six is to write an about me section and then week seven is to write how to buy and then week eight is to ask anybody for testimonials so what you essentially have is 12 weeks to launch your website. I have seen people launch a website in one day. 12 weeks, you got it. Okay, and then Anne, I don't know if that was clear enough, so please ask a follow-up question if it wasn't clear enough to get you the answer that you wanted. Maria says, do you think we need to have one offer to share with clients? More specific as a confident coach, should I have one program that helps you achieve goals, confidence, or many things for many ideal clients? Well, sim especially when you're starting, especially when you're starting, simplicity is best. You guys, what is going on with my hair? It feels like I have a toupee. It does it not? Like, does my, is my part funny? I feel like it is. And you want to know what? I don't care. I'm going to show up with my toupee. The, the goal, more than anything, is that clarity is kind. Brene Brown said that. Clarity is kindness. The more clear you can be, the better. And I believe one ideal client. You can have multiple products for that one dream client, but like it could be like confidence in your family, confidence in the boardroom, confidence in the bedroom. I, I'm just coming up with things off the top of my head, but you're really selling to what? The minute you focus on who your ideal client is, the better off all of your product suite will be. But do I think you should have like uh, confidence in the bedroom, confidence in the boardroom, and you know, beekeeping 101. No, your products have to all target that one dream customer. Great question. Uh, Savannah, I love your advice. I'm a dog photographer and I'm trying to grow engagement on my Instagram. I never get responses to polls, questions, or stickers. Any tips? <coughs> <coughs> so Savannah, sorry guys, hold on. Excuse me. So Savannah and anybody else who's saying, I'm not getting engagement. Number one, on the inside of Social Curator, we provide story templates and we have an integration with Canva. These templates teach you the, ty the right types of stories you should be posting to get that engagement. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh my gosh, this is what happens. This is like a nightmare, this is a nightmare. That one time I was teaching a live class and I couldn't breathe because I'm coughing so much. Where did it come from? It's hitting at the 18th minute. All of a sudden, I'm having an attack. <clears throat> Let me just power through this. Mind over matter. No more coughing. Okay. We have an issue on the inside of Social Curator. How to effectively use stories to get sales, to get engagement. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that your stories are following a very specific structure that would incite engagement. That when you ask a poll or a question, you must first offer some sort of benefit or value. And you mustn't complicate the question. Like if you have a question that, since you're a pet photographer, tell me your earliest experience with your pet that caused a transformational moment. Like no one's gonna sit there in your story and be like, let me pour out my heart here. Yes and no dog or cat, fish or birds. 
<coughs> you want to make sure that your pulls are as easy. And like if you use a slider, it's like um, how often do you feed your golden doodle? And it's just like once a day, twice a day, three times a day, or way too much with snacks. And then have them use a slider. You want to make them very, very, very easy to start. And here's the thing. If you want people to vote on a poll or a story or respond with a quick reply or a DM now, you must reward the actions that people are taking. So if somebody sees a story and they send a quick reply, like a 100 or heart emojis, respond back to that and say, thank you for liking this. Thank you for thinking this is funny. Or are you a pet owner? Or I love taking photos of animals. Thank you for being a part of my journey. You must give the engagement that you want. If you want people commenting and talking back to you, you must first go back and, and talk to them to teach them that you are a real person and you do value that level of engagement. Okay. <clears throat> Victoria says, do you believe that in 2022, we need to narrow down to only building one platform at a time? I believe that you should do as much as you can, however you can. You will not hear me say, you must hone your focus to one platform. You won't hear me say that. You also will not hear me say you should be on every platform creating all types of content. No. We each walk our own journey. We each have our own time and we each have our own skill set. I don't advocate for anybody being stressed out, tired, overwhelmed, or hating or begrudging the fact that they don't have to. They get to market their business. It is an honor that I get to market my business. It is an honor that I get to stand up and pledge my allegiance to a product I believe in. It is an honor that I get to see transformations of business owners who go from feeling tired, stressed, and overwhelmed to confident and getting sales on social media. That's an honor. If I don't wake up and market my business knowing it's an honor, the marketing feels flat. So I don't think that you should become somebody or do something that is not in integrity with who you are. If you have the bandwidth for one platform, you do you. Bang it out, rock it out. If you have the bandwidth to create content on one platform and then find a way to strategically and concertedly repurpose it on different platforms, well then bang that out too. That is 100% my strategy. That is the strategy that the team and I teach on the inside of Social Curator. We have an entire issue dedicated on how to create long form copy, then repurpose it on social media, and then repurpose it from one platform called your primary platform to your secondary and tertiary, your second and third platforms. I believe in it. I believe in working smarter, not harder. So you will see a lot of parallels between the content I'm creating, but at different times and focused on different platforms. Um, I've set a goal to be consistent with my content on social media this year. What type of content should I focus on creating and do you have any tips for batching? The type of content you should be creating is essentially for your dream customer. This is why I can't answer this question and say, oh, everybody should be creating reels. Everybody should be um, writing long form blog posts. No, I focus always on creating content that your dream customer would like and engage with. If you are serving an audience, let's say that your dream customer is 67 years old in the Midwest and she's, you know, at a late, like she's an empty nester and she wants to get back into fitness and you're a fitness professional and you want her to um, take your online course or your online fitness classes. Maybe she's not a big fan of reels. So I wouldn't say do that. But this goes back always. I mean, this is like a benchmark of Social Curator. This is part of the reason why I created Social Curators is I see so many talented, insanely amazing businesses and business owners go out of business, not because they're not good or amazing or fantastic. It's simply because they have a product or service that they're like, anybody can buy it. 
If you're a fitness professional, I have zero doubt that you could teach a 17 or a 71 year old your fitness instructions. I have no doubt that you could teach men and women. I have no doubt that you could teach somebody who lives in a big city on a coast or somebody in a small town, middle America. I have no doubt you can. But the problem with saying my business is for everybody is that you end up sticking out to nobody. It is not because your business isn't amazing or you aren't perfect at disseminating this information. It's just that when you speak, it falls on deaf ears because it's like vanilla. Like nothing's wrong with vanilla ice cream, but nobody's walking into 31 flavors being like, you know what I want today out of all these options? Vanilla. I am asking every business owner to choose to become cookies and cream or mitten chip or rainbow sherbet or rocky road. Choose to be a particular flavor for a certain type of person because the person who wants the rocky road is gonna look around and be like, this rocky road, if anybody likes rocky road, this is the rocky road you need. And that's what you do to create evangelists. That is what you do to create people to talk about your rocky road business, to take a picture of your rocky road business, to come back to your rocky road business friends we are talking about ice cream mm. I will eat ice cream I love ice cream I actually beg my husband do not keep ice cream in this house if you keep ice cream in this house I love you and I hate you because I, I, I love the idea of it and then I'm just like oh did I just sit here and eat a pint by myself I mean, I think I probably need to end this conversation because I am admitting of my gluttonous sins. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with a pint of ice cream. I'm like, I'm just going to bring out a teaspoon and I'm just going to eat with this teaspoon because it's like a smaller spoon. It's not a tablespoon. And I'm going to have enough wherewithal to put the container back in the freezer. And then all of a sudden I'm like scraping the end of a pint to a pint. Do you know how like many days of calories a pint of good ice cream is? If y'all, if y'all, if you are like, if you are a true ice cream connoisseur, there is a brand called McConnell's. You can get it at Whole Foods or like small specialty stores. It's based in Santa Barbara, California. McConnell's, M-C-C-O-N-N-E-L-L-S. They make it like with like, they make it with the, the creamiest of creams, right? Like there are no skimping. There's no like, this is coconut milk with water and shavings of alfalfa sprouts. Oh no, this is like cream straight from the tea. It's like frothing. And then they have this chocolate chip peanut butter. It's called double peanut butter or double chip peanut butter. I don't know. Let me just tell you, you're welcome. You have a teaspoon of this stuff and then your life is changed forever. We will end this Q&A. See, I talk about business and all of a sudden I find a way to talk about like tacos, ice creams, or donuts. Um, have a great day. Let's go back and chat about how we started this conversation so that we have like a full loop and then I don't like hate myself for just wasting your time talking about ice cream. Uh, we can do this process together of building out big, massive goals. Jasminestar.com forward slash productivity friends. It is a free guide how to plan your year with your quarterly initiatives, small micro goals to get you to where you wanna go. It is an honor to serve you well. It is an honor for us to be connected. I hope you have a beautiful day.